It's a construction zone, but there's no doubt about it. Baseball will be played here tonight. This is Kauffman Stadium, and this is the first game of a three-game series between the Rangers and the Kansas City Royals. Hi again, everybody, along with Tom Grieve. I'm Victor Rojas, and welcome to another edition of Rangers Baseball here on FSN Southwest. A lot of changes if you were watching the pregame show before today's ballgame. Eddie Guardado, of course, the trade to Minnesota, and also Nelson Cruz called up after the game last night. He's in the starting lineup tonight, and Tom, you got to be happy for a guy that over the last couple of years really has not put it together here in the big leagues. Yeah, if there's ever been a guy who you said, what does this guy have to do to be in the big leagues, it's Nelly Cruz. He would have been in the big leagues several weeks ago if he wasn't injured. Very few times will you ever see a minor league player who put up the numbers that he put up at Oklahoma. 342, 37 home runs, a slugging percentage close to 70 percent. He's finally healthy. He's going to get his chance the last 31 games, and hopefully he'll take advantage of it and play really well. Now he's in the starting lineup in the seven hole and playing in right field. And just like Joaquin Aries, he's going to be getting the bulk of the duty the rest of the way. Coming up next. Feldman. Texas Rangers baseball on FSN Southwest brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Buy Progressive Insurance for a money-saving car insurance quote. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. Buy Jack in the Box. We don't make it until you order it. And buy Southwest Airlines. Please don't fly with us. Visit Southwest.com. Here's a good look inside Kauffman Stadium. There's some of the construction. The Rangers and the Royals getting ready to start this uh, three-game series tonight. Rangers tonight Tom get uh, a chance once again to see Scott Feldman go out there and kind of continue the, the job that he's done all season long. Well Scott pitched a pretty good game his last game against Detroit in fact through six innings it was a real good game it was scoreless he ended up with a quality start six innings gave up three runs take a little bit of a look at it he had good movement on his pitches sinker into the righties he had a cutter going away from the right hand hitters through a lot of strikes kept the ball down another solid outing where he pitched well enough to win a ball game and ended up with another no decision he only has four wins in his 20 starts but he's left with a lead 11 times and it always seems like there's one little glitch or something that happens during his start yeah. that it ball. doesn't allow him to pick up a win or something yeah early in the season there was a ball lost in the sun maybe out in Oakland and yeah, there's been a lot of games like that where he really has pitched well enough to win. Yeah, but for a guy that uh, supposedly needs his innings, innings, pardon me, limited, he continues to take the baseball every fifth day. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and hopefully the first pitch right here on FSN Southwest. There's a good look at Ron Washington, the bench coach Art Howes. They well, they really mull over the changes before the game. Eddie Guardado off to Minnesota. And of course, Nelson Cruz and his addition to the lineup. And this is the Southwest starting lineup that Ron Washington will run out there tonight. Joaquin Arias in the leadoff spot at second base. Michael Young at shortstop. Josh Hamilton at center. Milton Bradley back at DH. Blaylock at first. Marlon Bird out in left. Nelson Cruz in right. It'll be Gerald Laird doing the catching with Chris Davis, the third baseman, batting in the ninth spot. Against the right hander by the name of Gil Mesh. And this is the veteran that the Royals signed prior to last season to a five year deal to be the, the veteran and the anchor to that rotation. You know, considering the numbers he put up last year and the job he's done this year, so far so good. Yeah, based on what it takes to sign a free agent pitcher these days, the Royals signed a pretty good one. He had a nice season for him last year. This year he's got a winning record. His ERA is solid at 4.01. Fewer hits than innings pitched. He's ninth in the league in strikeouts. He's pitched really well the last couple of months. His last seven starts, 4 0, 217 ERA. Opponents are only hitting 180 against him in his last seven starts. His career against the Rangers doesn't look good, 4 and 8 with a 625 ERA. A lot of that bad ERA came a while back when he was pitching for Seattle. He had a nice start against the Rangers earlier in the year. Six innings, four hits, one run, had no decision in that start. I think he's probably a different pitcher and a better pitcher right now than he was for most of those starts that he has had against the Rangers years back. He's a guy that's got a career mark of 74 and 66, and this is the defense that will be playing behind him. David Jesus left, Joey Gathright in center, 
Jose Guillen in right. Mark Tian with the injured Alex Gordon takes over at third base. Mike Avilas, who's been red hot as a rookie at shortstop. Alberto Callasco back in the lineup at second. Ross Float at first. And doing the catching, it is John Buck. Bill Mesh, of course, a guy that uh, you go back to last year, the lone selection for the All Star team for Kansas City. A losing record at 9 and 13, but a very respectable 367 earned run average. And I guess when you when you look at a guy like Gil Mesh, you, you say that here's a guy that's had a ton of promise coming up through the Mariners organization and even in the big leagues. It just never really translated. I mean, that is a number of injuries here and there. This area starts things off by taking ball one. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing that happened to him early in his career. He basically missed two years, 2001, 2002. He did not pitch in the big leagues. Came back in 2003 and won 15 games. Arias flies out to Guillen and right. Here's the first down. But for what Kansas City was looking for when they signed Mesh, I think they're happy with what they got. It's pretty hard to have a, a solid winning record on a lower echelon team, but he's given them innings, 216 last year. That's something they wanted. And he's doing the same thing this year with a solid ERA. Got off to a terrible start this year. His ERA after five starts was eight, but he's brought it back down and he's really pitched well, as we've already said, through his last seven starts. He's always had pretty good life on his fastball. Strikeout totals are up there, 138 punch outs coming into this ball game. Everybody got on the Royals for giving him a five year contract at somewhere around 50 or 55 million dollars. It was a big contract. But if the Yankees gave that contract no one would have said anything and why don't the Royals have the right to go out and try to get a top of the rotation guy who can pitch 200 innings and show some improvement on their ball club by signing a free agent. There's a lot of teams who signed other players for similar money who wish they had Gil Mesh. <laughs> In fact without mentioning a lot of names around the league there's probably 10 or 15 guys that fit that bill on different teams. Some have argued that the Royals have to overpay to get arms or position players to come here. Maybe a little bit. Jose Guillen, perfect example prior to this season. You know, the Tigers were in that position a while back, too, when they signed Pudge, when they signed Maglio Ordonez. And, you know, people wondered why are they signing those guys? They're not going to be a pennant contending team. Well, you can't sign them all and go to the top overnight. It takes a while. And you have to have some building blocks over a two or three year period. I think that's what the Royals had in mind. They've still got him signed for three more years. And they're hoping over the next three years to become a competitive team. His name came up too during the trade deadline. He himself said he didn't want to leave Kansas City. He kind of likes it here, likes the ballpark, likes his teammates. Josh takes a strike on the outside corner. It's one and two. 29 home runs, 115 driven home by Hamilton. Rangers trying to snap a three game losing streak. 17 games back now, the Angels in the American League West. The breaking ball got him. That's a good curveball. A good fastball, and that's a strikeout pitch right there. Hard breaking curveball. So one out with Young over at first. Or pardon me, two outs with the man at first. And Milton Bradley coming up. Royals, just like the Rangers, especially over the last couple of days, have been beset with injuries. Losing Gordon, Luke Hochaver, their rookie pitcher. Ronnie Mayhay's on the shelf. Three twenty on the year for Milton with the twenty one home runs and sixty five runs batted in there back in there no problems with the hamstring or pardon me the quad.
the 0 2. Fouling that one off. Oh, it takes you a while to get used to the scoreboard out there. They've got a lot of information <laughs> on that board. You got to find it all. You have to kind of sort through it. Find the radar gun speeds. They've got on base percentage, slugging percentage, on base percentage plus slugging percentage, a little bio on the hitter, the defensive alignment, the batting order. Not much left to chance. All you have to do is look out there. Milton going the opposite way. That's going to get past to Jesus. Matt Walbeck's going to wave home Michael. Here comes a throw from Avilas offline, and the Rangers take a one nothing lead on Milton Bradley's double. A good job by Milton. He kind of sliced that ball away from DeJesus in left field. Off the bat, it looked like a ball that might fall in front of him for a single. But he, he it sliced away from him as he went toward it. Just kept going away from him. Went all the way to the wall. Kind of like the base hit in the RBI that Milton picked up yesterday, going the opposite way. Not a bad pitch, really, tailing away from him outside corner. Just what you'd like to do with that pitch. That ball jumping in the outfield grass like it does at the ballpark on the infield. Back home. Skidding past the Jesus. Blaylock steps up. Swing it at the first pitch. Just getting a piece of it. 265 on the season for Hammer. Four home runs and 15 runs batted in. Hank laid off that 0-1 breaking ball. Earlier on this year, when the Rangers were going real good, a lot of their success, of course, was going to those first inning runs and scoring a lot of them. Rangers now outscored their opponents in the first inning by just four runs, but there was a bigger margin as Blaylock hooks one into right. Guillen, a little stumble there, but hauls it in, makes the catch for the third out. But the Rangers strike first. They get a run on a couple of hits, leave a man on. Middle of the first, one nothing Rangers. Baseball coverage brought to you by LG and HD. LG, life's good. One nothing Rangers. Milton Bradley, an RBI single to left field, scoring Michael Young all the way from first. A double, I should say, for Milton. Bottom of the first inning. This is Trey Hillman's Southwest starting lineup. Mike Avila's having a great season for the Royals. He leads things off. Alberto Callasco at second. David De Jesus and left. Jose Guillen at right. Martin at third. It's Billy Butler at DH. Ross Sloat at first. John Buck doing the catching. And the speedster, Joey Gathright. Out in straightaway center field and batting ninth. Scott Feldman on the year four and five. Good start. To his major league starting career this year. And here's the Rico scouting report on the Ranger right hander. Well, he is four and five on the season. More innings than he's ever thrown before, but different kind of innings because he's had time off between. He's not a reliever anymore. As a reliever, you're pitching more frequently for shorter stints. His last five starts. He has the one start in Boston where he gave up a ton of runs early. That affects a lot of things, including his overall ERA and certainly what he's done recently. Coming off a nice start against the Tigers. Little chopper to short. There's the first down. Feldman went six innings against the Tigers. Allowed just three runs on five hits. Defensively for the Rangers, Bird and left, Hamilton in center, Cruz out in right. Davis at third, Young at short, Arias over at second, Hank Blaylock at first. And Gerald Lair doing the catching. And for the most part, it's going to be Nelson Cruz in right field. Brandon Boggs will be the designated fourth outfielder. Of course, anybody who's watched the Rangers over the last couple of seasons, watch Nelson play either in the big leagues or down in the minor leagues. Certainly more than capable of handling right field, a terrific throwing arm. 
Now it's just a matter of putting it all together here in the big leagues and he'll have some time to do that. It's, the ball goes one way the bat goes the other. And a one ball one strike count on Alberto Cayaspo. Well, I'd ask, ask you a little bit about that starter innings versus relief innings. There's the bat going away. You know, I'm probably not the best guy to ask about that. I'm not a pitching expert, but I think when you're looking at a reliever, say over a six month season, if a reliever pitches 55 or 60 times and has somewhere between 55 and 70 innings, that's a pretty full season for a reliever. That's a lot of work for a reliever. But if a starter has 25 or 30 starts and averages five or six innings per start and throws 125 or 130 innings, provided he's strong enough to handle that, I think that that equates very easily to the relief innings. And you can't really compare the innings because the 70 innings might have caused just as much wear and tear on the reliever's arm as the 125 innings did for the starter. Hamilton got a good read there and puts it away for the second out. And I think as you know the Rangers are monitoring Scott he's had a couple of times where he's had extra rest between starts they're not going to let him go out there if he's hurt. It's up to Scott to let them know how he feels and he says he feels great. He's not a 19 year old kid he's mid 20s big strong kid. Doesn't put excess wear and tear on his arm with his delivery. And so I think as long as he's feeling good right now the Rangers should feel pretty comfortable that he's just building up arm strength and getting more experience as a starter. I was going to say that was just. My basic follow up was going to be how much do you have to. Take into consideration what the actual individual feels and. What his desires are going forward. I think you have to take how he feels. Pretty seriously. And put a lot of weight on it. You talk to the trainers you talk to your conditioning coach. What kind of work ethic does he have. Is his velocity going down I mean if a guy's throwing 92 or 93 miles an hour for four months and all of a sudden he's throwing 84 85 miles an hour. You know maybe there's something going on with his arm. But I think Scott pretty much consistently has gone out there with the same velocity the same movement. And there's been times where he hasn't had the command of his pitches. And he gets hit around a little bit but that happens to every pitcher. Good bad or. Mediocre you're going to give up some runs sometime and not have your best stuff but I don't think it's had anything to do with arm fatigue or wear and tear from being a starting pitcher. I think he's handled that part of it well. Especially making the transition from a little sidearm to the three quarter arm angle yeah, that he's at. Yeah, now. He's changed a lot of things. A lot of on the job training. I think originally the plan was to get a lot of this on the job training in the minor leagues before he got to the big leagues. But injuries and opportunity presented themselves and I think he's done a good job taking advantage of that. Again has a one ball one strike count. Royal right fielder hit his 17th home run. In yesterday's game. Against the Tigers. Royal snapping that seven game losing streak yesterday. the left Marlon Bird with the catch it's the third out of the inning nothing doing for the Royals here in the first no runs a hit they leave a man on one in the books it is one nothing range. Rangers Royals tomorrow on FSN Southwest. Hey it's hot ticket time from now until the middle of the third inning. Tickets in the Fox Box Section 215 will only be $12 for the game Tuesday, September 2nd against the Seattle Mariners. $2 of each ticket purchased will be donated to a charity each month. August featured charities, the American Heart Association. Discounts are available at TexasRangers.com slash hot ticket time or by calling 972 Rangers. Marlon Bird, Nelson Cruz, Gerald Laird against Gilmesh. Rangers up 1-0. Marlin at 295 on the year. Nine home runs, 39 driven home. He's bounced around the outfield and now settling into left. Rangers with a couple of 0 2 hits off Gil Mesh 
in the first inning. Michael Young and then Bradley double. So this is your first first visit to Kansas City since the construction started. What do you think so far? Yeah, I think it's going to be beautiful. They had a beautiful park before they started the construction. And when you look at the plans and what it's going to look like when it's done, it's going to be even nicer. Spectacular scoreboard, I'll say that. It's hard to take your eyes <laughs> off the scoreboard. Find yourself watching that instead of the game. And we were here earlier this year. There's just a lot of dirt down in the left field corner area and right field. There's that scoreboard. Opening up some sections in the upper deck. That's a just a what they call the old vomitory. They just want bigger breezeways for fans to come in and out. Cruz sky went back. out to left center field, and that's going to go for extras. Nelson with a leadoff double. That didn't take long. Remember, remember when Nelson joined the team last year here in Kansas City? <laughs> Hit a couple of home runs in his first day back. Right after, right around the Kenny Lofton deal last year. Well, Nelson, Nelson, the last couple of years in AAA has put up huge numbers. He's had signs of success at the big leagues, but overall has come up a little short of his expectations. But after the season that he had in Triple A, you just have to think he's an even better player right now. It's, it's tough to put up the numbers he put up in Triple A and not have that translate with his experience at his age into success at the major league level. Sabermetricians have formulas that they use to try to translate minor league numbers into major league numbers. And those are so spectacular that even if you take away some of the numbers that you would project at the big leagues it still has to project to big league success you would think. He's put up terrific numbers down in the Dominican Winter League leading up to each of the last couple of years. He's played in the Caribbean series he's felt confident but there's something about this year they say there's a there's a difference about him before a game as well as during the game and that's Maybe it just clicked. Maybe that, that switch went on. Well, it doesn't always happen when you're 19, 20, or 21. It does occasionally. Sometimes it happens in your late 20s. Three, uh -oh. and they're trying to be aggressive here, and Avilas goes to third, and there's out number two. And the thing about Nelly is he may be in his upper 20s, but he's in great shape. And if he in fact is a late bloomer there's still plenty of time to enjoy a fine major league career. It's not like he's missed the boat or wasted time or anything like that. He can still play 10 very productive years in the big leagues if it all clicks for him. And if it does click you've got a chance of having a, a really good player because he's got excellent tools. He runs well he throws well. And he's got big time power. So if it translates that he is coming into his own you might really have a good ball player and a guy that essentially any other major league team could have claimed in spring training didn't work out that way fortunately for the Rangers he stayed within the organization and lo and behold he's back up yep Chris Davis batting in the nine hole back over at third base. 269 average with the 12 home runs, 36 runs batted it. Mesh really slowing things down here. Laird. That's the jump of the year right there. <laughs> Stolen base for Gerald Laird. That might be the all time jump. Now occasionally you'll see that same jump the pitcher steps off throws to second and gets the runner. But as a right hand pitcher you can't see out of the back of your head. I don't know if anyone yelled to mesh or not. Ross Glow did I heard it up here. 
But Gerald, Mesh didn't Gerald, register with Mesh. He, he had about five steps on the way before Mesh let go of the ball. Man in scoring position, 2 1. Davis found him that one back. It's 2 and 2. Just the second stolen base for Gerald this year. Well, Chris went through that funk, funk, I should say, a couple of weeks ago. He's turned it around as we saw the stat just a, a moment ago. Count to full with Arias on deck. Royals pitchers now have allowed at least one base runner in 25 in the last 28 innings. That's how it's gone for Kansas City. Lays off, and there's ball four. First walk issued now by Mesh to go with the one strike count. Yeah, couple of men on now for Joaquin Arias. Was there a misspelling somewhere in the in the Royals notes about Joaquin Arias? Because how many people came up to us today asking us how you say the name? How you say the name? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just like Joaquin Benoit, right? Same thing. Yeah, someone asked us if it ended in M or N. Uh, Royals have Joaquim Soria spelled differently. Mm The executioner. That's what they call him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Joaquim Soria, the executioner. He's done a nice job for them in the bullpen. They floated out the idea of possibly making him a starter at some point. Yeah, he's got that kind of stuff. He could probably do that. Arias keeps the at bat alive on that breaking ball. We're told that the Royals asked us about it because so many teams mess up Joaquim Soria's name. So they just want to make sure. Make sure they didn't mess up ours. Arias hit a fly ball to right field that DN tracked down at foul ground. It's 0 for 1. He's been fun to watch when he's been on the base pass. He's done a nice job at second base. Still talking with Ron Washington about the Guardado and Cruz thing. And Kinsler's name came up. And so no definitive timetable on that. As Arias bounces one to short. Avilas goes the short way to Cayasco. And they force out Davis for the third out. No runs. They hit a couple of left on. Middle of the second. One nothing Texas. CN ya estamos al aire ahora sí. En FSN puede escuchar la transmisión en español de hoy. Ya sabe agarre su control remoto. Busque el menú. Después programa el SAP y lo escuche en español el día de hoy con un servidor. Elena Ornelas desde aquí, desde Kaufman Stadium en la ciudad de Kansas. Así que. Vámonos con la acción aquí en la parte baja del segundo episodio. Thanks, Elena. The SAP broadcast brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Marty and Billy Butler, Ross Glode against Scott Feldman. Gave up a first inning single through 14 pitches in that first inning. 246 on the year for Tian. 10 home runs, 45 runs batted in. Again, it's. Bounced around as far as positions are concerned. Lines one right to Michael. There's the first out. Originally a third base, but he's played first base. Outfield now back to third. Hey, stay tuned for tonight's Texas truck stop feature. We'll 
chance to hear from Marlon Berg, people he admires most. Butler, the DH, 261, seven home runs, 42 driven home. Struggled to start the year in the big leagues, was set down to AAA. Get things corrected and figured it out down there. 337 with Triple A Omaha in 26 games. Toward the hole goes Michael. Two away. The Royals, of course, managed by UTAX, Trey Hillman. And it's gonna be a tough go for Trey to come back from Japan to his first major league managerial job. Come to Kansas City with a lot of expectations. You know they figured they had a, and they they still do a good core group of young players here. But to go through the season that they've they've had to go through here, especially of late with all the injuries. Yeah, I think they had hoped it might come a little faster for them. But when you look at their team at the start of the year, they're still going to go through some growing pains. They've had some good young players get to the big leagues. They, in their minds, had some pretty good drafts, have some pretty good players in the minor leagues. So they're confident of the future, but along the way, there can be some bumps in the road for sure. You could probably take note, too, if you, if you start talking about, all right, we're the Royals and we're the American League Central. We've got to deal with X, Y, and Z. And of course, that being the White Sox and the Indians and the Tigers. The same could be said about the Tampa Bay Rays for years and the way they've turned things around. Now, granted, they've been able to draft and develop young guys and have always seemed to be in the top three as far as picks are concerned. But they've they've turned those picks into solid prospects at the major league level. This one should stay in play. Davis over. Yeah, he'll make the catch for the third out. So one, two, three inning for Scott Feldman. Here in the second, we've played two. It's still one nothing Texas. Texas Rangers baseball on FSN Southwest brought to you by your Texas Dodge dealers by Geico Insurance and by Pennzoil. Top of the third here at the K. One nothing Texas. Milton Bradley with an RBI double in the first. Here's Michael Young who scored that run. Swinging it, pulling one off the foot of Tian to Avilas. Look pretty, but Michael Young will reach. There's a single for Michael. So Good job by the scorekeeper. That was a smash, yep. boy. Two for two. Tian trying to play that one to the backhand. Well, we were talking in, in the pregame show or the open a couple of days ago what Michael had to do to get to 200 hits. And in the last three years he's averaged 40 hits in September. And he had about at the time eight games left in August so if he had a good week. To end the month of August going into September he would need the same kind of season that he's had the last three years to get to his 200 hits so it's definitely within reach not going to be easy because the last three September's I think he's hit about 350 or 360 but he's done it before and that's pretty much what he's going to have to do to get do again to get there. Do you scoff at the notion to those folks that say ah, 200 hits. Why celebrate 200 hits. Um, no because having had an opportunity to try to get 200 hits I know how hard it is. <laughs> <laughs> I would be shooting for 200 hits every two years not every year. <laughs> so when you're a 300 hitter and you're going out there every day and you get 200 hits for five or six straight years that is an accomplishment. Little 
broken bat single to right. Young is going to go to third. Not hit that hard. And grass holding that one up and the Rangers have back to back hits to start to third inning runners at the corners and here comes Milton. A double by Milton in the first inning is 28. The RBI is 66. And Josh hit that ball a little bit toward the end of the bat. Kien's got a nice arm out in right field, but never had a chance to make a throw right there. I think that's the second Marlin Bird issued bat that he's broken in the last <laughs> couple of days. Well, they've got they got plenty, and if they don't, they can buy some more. Team will buy them for them. They can get as many bats as they want. Off speed pitch for strike one. If you had your choice, would you go with the maple? No. You would have gone with the go. ash? I, I wouldn't go with the maple just for this reason. It seems like there's a, a number of times where a player will hit the ball right on the good part of the bat and the thing will break in half. And once that's happened once, I don't know why he would use a maple bat. I can't imagine that the ball goes farther. I don't know this for sure, but I wouldn't think it goes any farther. And guys have been using ash bats for a hundred years. So given the choice, I don't I don't know that I would go with a maple. Now maybe if I were down playing again in the dugout, talking to the players, talking to guys on other teams, there might be a good reason for it. I don't know what it is. I always felt very very comfortable using the other bat. Never had a chance to use the maple bat, so it's probably not fair to say that. A lot of studies are going on right now about the maple bat because of how dangerous it can be when those bats shatter. So many times you'll see one shatter, helicopter through the air, and then stick about three or four inches into the ground. And as many of those that break in half and fly into the stands, you can imagine how dangerous that can be. But a couple of guys on the field this year get impaled. There was a pitcher. I think the Pirates hitting coach in the dugout. That's pretty scary. Got stuck in the arm. Speaking of all the bats, the man in charge of the bats is Zach Manassian. We ought to say hi to Zach. I'm sure he's watching the game tonight. Pitch to Milton, a little bit inside. You talked to Zach today. What procedure did he have done? He had the, the cataract. Cataract done. Might have to have one done to another eye. That should score a run. Young is tagging. Milton Bradley with his second RBI. It's 2 0 Texas. Nice job by Milton. Two strikes getting that sack fly. So, Zach, if you're listening, we're thinking about you. Miss you on the trip. Also, I ought to say hi to Rudy Jaramillo, too. Rudy was out at the ballpark the other day. Still rehabbing from, knee, from his knee replacement. Going to have to have a little bit of a procedure done. Hopes to be back the beginning of September is what Rudy's shooting for, but he looked great. Going through a harder rehab than I think most of the players go through when they have an injury. Working out every day. Very painful. To break the scar tissue that he's got in there right now. But he's going to go through a procedure that will help that process along. The unfortunate side effect is significant pain. But I guess if there's anyone to go through that and handle it, it'd probably be Rudy. to Blaylock misses outside it's two balls and no strikes and well, Zach has gone through the cataract procedure you had a little procedure of your own you're feeling pretty good about that aren't you so the far LASIK? so good not too bad better than I thought it would you know doing it on an off day the morning of an off day and yeah coming back on Friday or whatever and Eric Nadell's gonna have uh, I think he's got a little cataract issue he's gonna be taken care of in November uh-huh
Yeah, these are reading glasses. I actually had to pick up today. Believe it. Pull the string on them. I can read the street signs from probably about three miles away. That's pretty good. The scorebook. Little little problem right now. Oh, look like 40, 41 now. <laughs> I think you look a lot younger than that. Kurt Dykert's the one thinks you look old. Blaylock just chased the ball, and there's the second down of the inning. Actually, you know, it, it just kind of narrows the gap between you and me, really. You it know, does. you were looking really young. Now you put those on, and we kind of come together a little bit more. See, the difference is I look I... about the same or older, and now you're catching up with me. I only I have to wear during down, a game, though. I haven't come back down to the pack at all. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the scoreboard, and my cornea is burned. It's so bright. Well, see, we both should look as well as Sherry looks right behind us. Then we'd be in good shape. All Sherry does is just put out the candy for everyone else. And Big John, is, Big John, put your head forward, John. We can see you back there. There's John, our crack statistician in the background. What a team! <laughs> it's always fun coming to Kansas City. That's for sure. Line shot the left. On with his first hit of the night. First and second. Two outs and Nelson Cruz will get another shot here. Rangers getting some hits against Gil Mesh. That's their sixth hit. They had two hits in the first. One in the second. They've had three hits here in the third. Michael's got a couple of them. Yeah, the amazing thing is he threw that one big curveball. A great bite on it in the first inning. Struck out Hamilton. And, that, and and since then, the breaking ball has been more of a just a get it over pitch for him. He didn't, didn't have that bite. So the guys are laying off of it. Swinging at that fastball. Six hits now for the Rangers. Two in the first, one in the second. And three here in the third inning. Nelson had one in the second inning, the double. His first hit in the big leagues this year. Three week stint on the disabled list in Oklahoma. Strained his quad as he lays off the curveball for ball one. Overall in the big leagues, Nelson, a 231 hitter with 15 home runs, 56 runs batted in. 145 career games, the Brewers and the Rangers. Took a big rip there. It's one and one. Has to be named the PCL Player of the Year. Yeah, I mean it's inevitable. You got to be the Minor League Player of the Year. Period. Mm -hmm. Probably won't be because generally they give that to a younger prospect type guy. Not that Nelly's not a prospect. Going the opposite way into the corner and that is gone. A wow. big fly for Nelson Cruz. <laughs> Did you think that was gone when he hit it? I thought he had a chance, but I didn't think it was going to stay fair. I didn't either. Three run home run for Nelson Cruz and the Rangers lead is now four nothing. I know one thing if you're ever going to call Nelly Cruz up again make sure you're in Kansas City <laughs> when you do it. His first day back is spectacular two years in a row. About that. Well, that's using the whole field right there for a power hitter right down the right field line. I thought that was just especially the way Guillen played it in right field. Outside part of the plate just going with it. Yep. Laredo for one having reached on a 
fielder's choice. Stole a base. Laird popping one up to shallow right. Again, will make the catch. There's the third out, but the Rangers tack on four runs. Sack fly by Milton Bradley, the three run home run by Nelson Cruz. Five nothing Rangers. And bring the whole family to a ball game with the Coca-Cola Rangers family pack. Save up to 40% on four tickets, four Hebrew National hot dogs, and four soft drinks starting at just $60. Additional person discounts are available. And it's sponsored by 98.7 K Love. For tickets, visit TexasRangers.com or just call 972 Rangers. Five nothing Rangers here in the bottom of the third. The catcher John Buck leads things off against Scott Feldman. Takes ball one. Buck. Gath Wright and Avila's eight nine and one do up in Kansas City. Two twenty three average. For the Royals catchers shared some duties with Miguel Olivo. No strikeouts no walks for Scott Feldman one hit allowed that was by David De Jesus up the middle. Scott and deep to right center field long run for Cruz and that one's off the top of the fence. Pretty good poke going the opposite way and Buck is in its second with a double. That ball hit about a foot from the top of the wall. Maybe less than a foot. There's a little bit of a breeze looking at the flags in right field. It doesn't seem like anything's really caring. But maybe with that ball that Cruz hit and now this one that Buck hit. A swirling effect out to right field. Joey Gathright the batter. Well, for Gathright, you'll see Chris Davis playing way in at third base. Hank will be in quite a ways at first base. Because if he gets a decent butt that bunt down, it's hard to throw him out. It's one thing he's been trying to work on is that bunting game. It doesn't have to be a perfect bunt as fast as he gets down to first base. As long as you can deaden the ball. Yeah. Laird's pretty good from behind the plate coming out getting those just missed outside it's one ball one strike. Well, Gathright could become a guy that could hit 280 or 290 walk a little bit more beat out some bunts he's he's a huge threat on the bases stolen 21 bases this year. And Trey Hillman's given him the opportunity by moving De Jesus to left and putting him in center. Kind of what you're talking about right there, just a little just slap and go. Yeah, you can slap it on the ground to the left side of the infield. You've got a great he he has a great chance to beat it out. <laughs> Not the rest of us, but he does. <laughs> Where has the bunt gone? You know the Rangers bunt quite a bit. Gerald Laird's a guy that got seven or eight bunt hits last year. There it is. That's going to be a tough play. Michael gets rid of it quickly, and Blaylock can't keep the foot on the bag. Okay. Pulled him off the bag. He had a chance. He had yep. time, but a very tough throw to make. He knows he has to get rid of it quickly, and because he had no time, and how quickly he had to get rid of the ball, the throw is a little bit offline. That's exactly what we're talking about with Gath right. He just slapped the ball on the ground, not directly at the shortstop. He's got a great chance to beat it out. Force the infielder to rush his throw. Michael was cheating in a couple of steps too and trying to cut that play off. So two on with nobody out here in the third and here's Mike Avilas. 
solid rookie campaign. Here's a guy that was taken off the 40 man roster after being the minor league player of the year for the Royals last year. Had a fantastic spring, didn't make the team. Yeah, his 331 average is not just 70 or 80 at bats either. He's been up 287 times coming into the game. Hitting 331, that's pretty strong. Tops in the American League on rookies. Yeah. Well, it's about maybe half a season, a little less than half a season actually. He has 23 doubles to go along with go along with it. Doesn't strike out very much, doesn't walk very much. Two and one now. Villas, 27 years old, former seventh round pick back in 03. Royals as a team don't walk very much. Alex Gordon really is the only guy in their team that has a decent amount of walks. And they're on base percentage as a team. Is only 315. They've got some guys with some pretty good averages, some guys who have hit the ball pretty well, but as far as on base percentage goes, it's it's pretty low. Feldman, of course, capable of throwing that double play ball. And Avilas, for a shortstop, runs all right, but certainly not a Joey Gathright type. And we'll find out. There he is to Young to first. Safe at first. There's a little bit of an example right there of a free swinger. 3 2 pitch, nobody out, couple of men on, looked like it could have been ball four. But he's also a guy that doesn't strike out very much, which means he doesn't swing and miss very much, so he puts the ball in play. And that's a tough pitch to do much with, other than exactly what he did. A guy with a little bit of plate discipline, maybe you take that pitch, maybe it's bases loaded. But those are things you try to develop as a young player, and Avilas is a rookie learning those things. Like Joaquin had to just wait that last little moment there, that high chopper. One out, runners at the corners for Alberto Cayaspo. Cayaspo for one with a fly ball to center field. He had some problems off the field earlier this year. Decided for a a DUI that immediately placed on the disabled list was gone and he's back in there at second base. Put up some decent numbers before the incident and still swinging the bat well since coming back. Inning that really Feldman's been extended through 14 pitches in that first inning. We're just nine in the second. Now for Kansas City. 
fifth RBI for Kiaspo. You can tell Scott's trying to get that pitch inside. And the movement brought it back right over the middle of the plate. Not where he was trying to throw that ball. You throw that same pitch about a foot lower, maybe you get a ground ball, maybe you get a double play, but that's at the top of the strike zone, middle of the plate, and that ended up as a line drive to center field. De Jesus one for one with a single. Going the opposite way, and Bird will play it on a bounce. Avila scores, it is five to two Rangers. Second hit of the night for De Jesus, picking up his 58th RBI. Andy Hawkins, the Ranger pitching coach, is going to go out. I'm sure Andy's going to tell him, relax, settle down, keep the ball down, throw your sinker, get that ground ball, get the double play, get out of the inning. Nice job by Marlin in left field, too. Just like that ball that De Jesus off the bat of Bradley had skitter past him. Marlon was going over there. The ball took off on him as well. It did a nice job of keeping it there and keeping Kayaspo at second base. So two runs in for Kansas City. And here comes Jose Guillen, the right fielder. Wake Forest against Baylor College Football Special. Brought to you by Suzuki. It's Thursday at 7 p.m. in high definition only on FSN Southwest. Yeah, takes a breaking ball for a strike. He's 0 for 1 with a fly ball to left. Gian's another guy that very tough to walk. He's only walked 19 times, 473 at bats. His on base percentage is only 285 because of that. But he's had some pretty good production. He's hit 32 doubles, knocked in 80 runs for the Royals. Yeah, and through the breaking ball. There's a one ball, two strike count. Somewhat of a disappointing year, if you will, with the couple of squabbles he's had in the dugout. The clubhouse. Not necessarily seeing eye to eye with Trey Hellman on certain occasions. They say that they've moved past it, but offered big money to sign here. Certainly didn't turn it down as that pitch is low. Runners go and Guillen Chase would probably would have been ball four. Yeah, that's the second hitter that's done that. The ball wasn't even close to being a strike. He just made up his mind he was going to swing at the three two pitch, guessing he was going to get a strike to hit. This pitch is way out of the strike zone. That ball might have hit him if he didn't foul it off. He swung and missed that pitch, would have hit him right in the shoulder. Go again. There's a high chopper. The only play is going to be the first. Two away. Runners advance 90 feet. Mm -hmm. 
Mark Tian will get a chance here. He lined down softly to Michael in the second inning as the leadoff man. In an inning where the Royals have a pretty good rally going, there's been two hitters, Avilas and Guillen, who probably made an out on what would have been ball four, the two outs in the inning. Feldman opting to work from the stretch. Here's a breaking ball for a strike. The inning started with Buck getting a double off the top of the fence in right center. Gathright with the infield single. Velas reaching on a fielder's choice. Kayaspa with an RBI single. De Jesus with an RBI single. And now the ground out by Guillen. Feldman and Laird can't get on the same page as far as the signs are concerned. Over the last 12 games coming into today's games, the Royals were 18 for 89, 202 with runners in scoring position. So they're improving on that in this inning. The other thing the Royals haven't done is they haven't hit the long ball since August 12th. They've been out homer 24 to 3. Just 91 on the year, last in the American League. Got him swinging. There's the third out. The Royals get on the board with a couple of runs. They do it on four hits, three in the books. It is five to two Rangers. There's no crying in baseball because there's no junior high in baseball. There are no popularity contests, no bathroom bullies, no wedgies in baseball. There's no summer school. No spelling bees, and there are no short gym shorts in baseball. And that's why you could use some more of it. Affleck. Let's take a look at the Aflac trivia question for tonight. Name the only three pitchers in Royals history to throw a no hitter. Two of them are in the stadium. You were part of one of them. I was. Couldn't have thrown that no hitter without me. <laughs> Taking an over. <laughs> Five two Rangers, Davis, Arias, and Young to start the fourth against Gilmesh. From 60 pitches, 40 for strikes. Davis drew a walk in the second inning, the only walk issued by Mesh, and he skies oh, one of man. Monster shot to right field. Look at that thing. And Guillen at the wall <laughs> makes the catch. Yeah. How I've about seen, that? I see guys getting eaten up by line drives. He got ate up, eaten up by how high that ball was. You talk about just missing hitting the ball 450 feet. Guillen had to do everything he could just to catch that high fly ball. A moon rocket. He hit one like that in Texas the other day. So one out for Arias. Makes a breaking ball for a strike. Joaquin is over to a fly to right. Pulled into a fielder's choice at the end of the second inning. There's a bouncer up the middle for a base hit. I think Chris hit the one in Texas. Kelly Donaldson times him. 
lead and had hang time of seven seconds. That one topped it at 7.2 seconds. And you're starting to get up where there's not going to be one with much, much more hang time than that. Who can hit a ball further? Hamilton or Davis? Well, I don't know the answer to that to tell you the truth, but I, mean, I got to go. I got to go with Josh just, after the after the home run derby in Yankee Stadium just based on. I mean, I think Chris can hit him a long way. But right now I got to go with Josh just because of he's kind of on the board, so to speak. Two awfully strong human beings, that's for sure. Yep. I'm glad we've got both of them. <laughs> I just would I'd like to see where that ball would have gone if he hit it right on the right spot to get the perfect trajectory for a maximum distance. Got to think it would have gone all the way out of here. Pretty close to it anyway. You would think that at the complex and surprise especially that number one field where they take oh, BP. Imagine where that they, thing would have gone. They've got to put some some netting <laughs> in right field. Right next to the street. Michael Young with his third hit. Arias is going to take third. And with that road running beyond that right field fence, it's a surprise. Someone's going to get hurt out there. <laughs> well, on some of the days where that wind is blowing out, even the one that Chris just hit, that thing, that thing would have stayed up there forever. Three hits for Michael, 155 hits now. 45 more to go. Bob McClure, pitching coach, going to come out, talk things over with Mesh. There's no action in the uh, Royals bullpen as of yet, although there's some scrambling going on. Joel Peralta first man up for Kansas City all right handers in that bullpen for Trey Hellman Gil Mesh hasn't had many games like this recently we talked about what he'd done in his last seven starts he's given up two earned runs or less in six of his last seven starts since the All-Star break came into the game in his last seven starts four and oh with a 217 ERA you can go back to the middle of June. In 14 starts, he's seven and one. Kansas City's 11 and three in those 14 starts. So he came into the game throwing well. And the Rangers have had a pretty good night so far. Nine hits already in the ball game. Chance for Josh to drive in a run right here. Josh one for two with a strikeout and a single with a run scored. has been very careful with the Rangers lineup a couple of strikeouts and a walk in and out of the glove of Buck on the foul tip Arias third young at first. Josh chasing that outside pitch again. Keeps the at bat alive and it stays at one and two. Hamilton playing in his 127th game. He had Michael Young tied in that category. Out number two, 
That big pitch right there for Gil Mesh. He threw the 92 mile an hour fastball. I think in an area where Josh would normally have some pretty good success. He just didn't happen to catch up with this one. That ball got a lot of the plate. Just was able to sneak it by him. So two outs it'll be up to Bradley now. An RBI double in the first inning a sack fly into third. Two runs batted in matching. Milton's career high in that category. She takes the breaking ball high. Milton drove in 67 with the Dodgers in 2004. It's also the year that he set a career high in games played with 141. Ground ball toward the hole of Velas. Nice stop. His plays to first. Out at first. And Milton, of course, with that quad issue. If it weren't bothering him, he'd be there. But Gary Darlin rings him up. No runs, two hits, and the Rangers leave two on. 5 2 Texas. Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? The one you really need to have. If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? I fly. Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. Uh -huh. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Uh -huh. Rangers, Royals, tomorrow on FSN Southwest. Bottom of the fourth, 5 2 Rangers. The Aflac trivia question. They are the only three pitchers in Royals history to throw a no hitter. Aflac! And the answer Steve Busby's done it twice. Jim Colburn, the Rangers' bullpen coach. And Brett Saberhagen, a member of the Royals Hall of Fame, inducted a couple of years ago. There's Buzz downstairs in the Steve Busby booth. How appropriate is that? There's Jim Colburn. Busby did his first one April 27th. 1973 at Detroit. 3-0 blanking. The second one was June 19, 1974 at Milwaukee. 2-0. Butler popping one up. There's job number one. Jim Colbert. May 14th, 77, right here in Kansas City against the Rangers, 6 0. Do you remember who hit leadoff for you that day? 77? 77. Um, well, Campy was hitting second. Davy Nelson? No. Your left fielder. Left fielder. Same last name Claudio as our Washington. manager. Yeah, Claudio Washington. Washington. Who was the first baseman that day? Probably Mike Hargrove. Mike Hargrove. DHing? DH could have been me. No. I was in the outfield. You were in day? right field that day. Man. Willie Horton. Willie Horton. Who was hitting behind you at third base? Third base must have been Toby. That's right. And who was hitting behind him playing second base? Hmm. Bump Wills. Bump Wills. And doing the catching? Doing a catching in 77 had to be Jim Sunberg. Jim Sunberg. Jim Colburn hit Toby Hare with a pitch in the sixth inning and walked Sonny in the sixth to mark the only that was it, base huh? runners. Faced 28 batters and struck out six. And Saber Hagens came in 91 against the White Sox, 7 0 here in Kansas City.
Ross Glode 0 for 1 with a pop up. And a called strike three. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Second punch out for Feldman. Second out here in the fourth inning and trying to go one, two, three as he did in the second inning. Coming up John Buck. Buck had a double off the top of the fence in right center field in the third inning. That started the rally, mini rally, if you will, for Kansas City. His 21st double. Breaking ball missed low. I vaguely remember Buzz as a pitcher. I mean, I remember him, but how good was he? Well, he would have put up some incredible numbers if he didn't get hurt. In fact, if he got hurt nowadays, with the advances in orthopedic medicine, he probably wouldn't have skipped a beat. He might have missed part of a couple of seasons. But the injuries that he had were career ending injuries back then. Today, he might be able to have the kind of surgery that would prolong his career. But when he was on, he was as good as any pitcher in baseball. He had a mid 90s fastball. He threw a hard slider that had a lot of break to it. Yeah, he was he was tough boy. He had a classic wind up. I mean, just to throw two no hitters as early in his career as he did shows you the kind of stuff he had. I think every now and then a guy can throw a no hitter, and he's really not the kind of pitcher you thought would throw a no hitter. But Buzz was the kind of guy that if he went out there with his best stuff, he had a chance to throw a no hitter. Very, very tough to throw a no hitter, but when he did throw one, I don't think anyone ever said, How'd Steve Busby throw a no hitter? They said, that's probably exactly what should have happened that night. I used to think he threw a curveball, but I asked him, he said, no, that was a slider. Three, two. Got him. A one, two, three That's inning for Scott, Scott Feldman. Scott right there. Got him on the high fastball. Four in the books, it is five to two Rangers. Hey fans, Sunday the seventh, the Rangers host the Red Sox for drumstick ice cream Sundays. Kids 13 and under get ice cream for just a buck. Sponsored by 100.3 Jack FM. Get your tickets at TexasRangers.com or call 972 Rangers. Top of the fifth inning, Hank Blaylock bouncing one through on the right side. And Blaylock with his first hit of the night. Rangers get their leadoff man on board once again. Yeah, Hank was 0 for 2, but he's had some good swings tonight. First time up, he had a curveball, lined it sharply to right field. He struck out his next time up, but had a couple of great swings and just fouled some pitches off. And that one caught up with and got himself a base hit. Take a look at the Ford leaderboard with Marlon Byrd at the plate now. 405 average here in the month of August. Get a base hit with a run scored in the third inning. Grounded to short in the second. So one for two night. Mesh now is given up. Ten hits. Thrown 76 pitches. That'll leave it to count of one ball, one strike. Weren't with us earlier. Eddie Guardado, of course, traded to the Minnesota Twins. For a minor league pitcher by the name of Mark Hamburger. He's in the Appalachian League this year. Elizabeth. That's got to be a shock to a kid like Mark who being traded probably was the farthest thing from his mind. And toward the end of the minor league season, all of a sudden the manager calls you in and tells you that. Your probably first thought is that the guy's making it up. Born in St. Paul, signs with the Twins. 
non drafted guy. Okay. I'm pretty sure Eddie loved it here, but he's got to be pretty excited to go back to the Twins mm -hmm. where he had so many good years. There's a line out. Laylock alertly gets back to the bag, and there's one out. Nelson Cruz will step to the plate, two for two. Here's the Coors Light free scam. That's the double into the alley in left center field. There's that home run just sneaking it inside the right field foul pole. A three run shot for Nelson. Coors Light free scam brought to you by the Frost Brewed Coors Light. <laughs> He's going for another one right there. He wasn't trying to sneak that around the right field pole though. He's trying to put on one of those cars out there above the fountain. A little sink on that one. <laughs> That's a healthy swing. Breaking ball shot to right. He's having night. Three for three, just like Michael Young, but now just a triple shy of the cycle. Two on and one out for Gerald Laird. <laughs> he had a big, had a big swing and a changeup that dipped a little bit below his bat, a little bit out in front of it, and then, as you were saying earlier, Vic. On the curveball doesn't have the same bite as he had on the one that he struck out Hamilton when that one stayed up a little bit. Nelly ripped it into right field. Hit the ball hard three straight times. Laird trying to bunt his way on. And there's the bunt. There's the infield single. You said whatever happened to the bunt, there it is. It is. That's all you got to do is just ask for it, will it, and it'll happen. Base is loaded with one out, and Chris Davis will get an opportunity. You know, generally. There's a lot of major league games where you wouldn't want the eighth place hitter to bunt with one out and men on first and second. You'd say go up and drive in the run, but in this particular case, you've got Chris Davis batting ninth, and so you bring him up with one out. That's a nice situation to be in. How about the pitch he just bunted? Ball was up and in. It still deadened it. Put it up the third base line with Tian playing back. Davis over one with a walk in that monster fly ball out to right. Makes the off speed low. We were showing you the Nelson Cruz double and then the home run. With the Cruz home run, the Royals now have been out homered since August the 12th, 25 to 3. It's a slight advantage. For Shortage them. of long ball. Yeah. One one that's up and in two balls and a strike. Joel Peralta was up and loosening last inning. And looks like he should be just about ready to go. Well, bouncer right back to mesh one two. Davis Aho. Well, it certainly looked like he legged it out. Second consecutive inning that the Rangers have had a close play at the first base bag called by Gary Darlin. Still up five to two. Texas Rangers baseball on FSN Southwest brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers and by Aflac Insurance. Bottom of the fifth here in Kansas City, the first of a seven game road trip. Three here in KC and then four on in Anaheim. Rangers scoring one in the first, four in the third to take a 5 0 lead. And two runs for Kansas City in the third. And boy, what a night so far for Nelson Cruz in his first game in the big leagues this year. Gathright shows the bunt, takes ball one from Scott Feldman. 67 pitches thrown by Scotty. 
retired the last five in a row, including the three strikeouts on the night. Gathright takes a strike. And that infield single to Michael Young in the third inning, so he's one for one. When the Rangers offensively have ended the last two innings with a chance to score, Milton Bradley was thrown out by a half a step on a ball to shortstop, and Chris was thrown out on that double play by less than that. Either guy is safe at first, the Rangers get a run. Rangers have left seven so far in this one, but it racked out 12 hits against Gilmesh, the new season high. Good pitch. There's that cutter that came in on him. Gathright's kind of shaking his head that he swung at that pitch. Natural movement. How about that? Natural four seam cut. Central two seam sink. Playable for Hamilton drifting back. And there's the first out. Well, Scott settled down after he gave up the four hits and two runs in the third inning. He's retired the last six hitters and struck out three of them. Mentioned the last time out, he went six innings. Quality start for him. Longest downing of the year has been seven innings. He's done that a couple of times. Vila shoots that one foul. And it's 0 and 1. The little guy caught that ball. Thought it hit somebody. <laughs> Front row seats. He put up his glove and snared it. Stand up and take a bow. <laughs> He's too shy. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever forget that. Low breaking ball. Avilas, 0 for 2 tonight. They ground out the fielder's choice. It's not 54 miles an hour like Vicente Padilla, but effective nonetheless. Trying to hook that one to left. Marlon Bird will make the catch for the second out. They threw him the same pitch. He was way out in front of it. The pitch before that, he was still out in front of it that time. But having seen it the pitch before, at least got the bat on it. But hit right off the end of the bat. And look at a couple of the pitches that Scott got his strikeouts with. A sinker on the outside corner, a couple of high fastballs that ended the last inning, striking out John Buck. No walks tonight. Three strikeouts for Scott. The AT and T Your World moment delivered. Kayaspo one for two. An RBI single. Boy, ever since that third inning little hiccup, he settled down nicely. Back on track. Tomorrow night, Kevin Millwood against Zach Greinke and then Matt Harrison pitches in the finale here on Wednesday night against Brian Bannister. He's had a good year. Bannister, not so much. 0 2 breaking ball. Kayaspo can run a little bit. Michael, little double clutch, and they still get him at first. 1 2 3 inning for Scott Feldman, the third time in tonight's game. He's retired the side in order 5 2 Rangers. Hey, it's time for the 
the Sonic Slam inning brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot worth $500 plus two tickets to a Texas Rangers game at dinner for two. It's Sonic Drive It. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for Olita Wallace from Bedford. If a Ranger hits a slam this inning, Olita will win 25,000 big ones. You can register at any North Texas Sonic restaurant. Gilmesh back out there. He'll face one, two, and three. Arias, Young, and Hamilton. Joaquin bouncing one foul. It's an 0 2 count. Beautiful night here in Kansas City. Actually, a beautiful day considering it's August. Typically warm and muggy, but temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. 78 at game time, and it seems to have cooled down a little bit. Broken bat. Flair over to first, and Globe makes the catch for the first down. Rangers got in last night. It was about 1.30 now, about 2 o'clock to the hotel. Probably about 2. When I turned the light out to go to bed, it was 3 o'clock. Up at 5.15 to get your work out. Not in. quite, not quite. Slept late today. Got, slept almost 9 o'clock. That was good for me. That's huge. That is. I needed it. Michael swinging at the first pitch. Browns one to Avilas. There's out number 2. Young now three for four, three singles with a couple of runs scored. Now to bring up Josh Hamilton. 29 more games to go after this one. Rangers at five games under 500. Trying to turn their stretch out on the road around. The victory tonight certainly would help that. Start off the road trip. A little high breaking ball for a strike. Found straight back and it's 0 and 2. The mesh here in the sixth inning looks like. Oh, what else have I got to lose? I'll just come right after, guys. He got out of the inning, got a, out of a couple of innings by going to his off speed pitches. Got Chris to tap that changeup back in the mound. Five runs, 12 hits, seven left on. For the Rangers, two runs, five hits, three left on now for Kansas City. Breaking balls in the dirt. The one guy we did fail to mention, talking about Guardado and Nelson Cruz, Bill White, left hander, has joined the team. Pitched well down at Triple A Oklahoma. The last 20 plus outings for him, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Gil Mesh. So that's the first time, sure enough, first time he's retired the sign in order. 5 2 Rangers. Football Saturday presented by Acura returns to FSN Southwest this week with a doubleheader. First, Oklahoma State takes on Washington State in a non conference open up for both teams, and then Washington battles 20th ranked Oregon in a Pac 10 showdown. Our coverage begins with the college football kickoff show Saturday at 2 p.m. in high def, only on FSN Southwest. Whoa, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. Six foot five sophomore. <laughs> That's pretty good. Bottom of the sixth inning, it is five to two. Rangers. De Jesus, Guillen, and Tian. It's three, four, and five. Feldman, three strikeouts, no walks. The five hits allowed. 81 pitches for Scotty, 53 strikes. De Jesus, two for two with a, an RBI as he grounds one. To the right side. Free hit game for De Jesus. Who used to be the former leadoff man for Kansas City. And now batting in the three spot. That'll bring up Guillen.
Again tonight 0 for 2 with a fly to left and a ground ball to short. It's a possible double play. Davis to Arias and that's in time. That's a nice job right there. Fairly slow hit ball right down the line. Took a long throw from third to second and Arias had to turn it. Nice job. Chris has got a strong accurate arm at least what we've seen in a short time it's been. It's a nice job. turn too, though. Yeah, very nice. Got rid of it quickly with De Jesus bearing down on Arias. The base is clear now with two outs. Here's Mark Tia. Joaquin still working the kinks out with that throwing arm. Tia takes a fastball high. Joaquin will be in the lineup for the most of the, most of the time now the rest of the way out. Although Wash did say that Ramon Vasquez may get the start tomorrow night against Zach Greinke. And the other thing that may happen is Ian Kinsler may come back too yeah. at some point in time in September. That's what we're all hoping for. And that was and that was the follow up you know after that whole conversation before the game with the manager. It's just a matter of we got to wait and see, you know. Well, listening to Ian talk over the last several days, it sounds like he's making some progress. I know he's counting on coming back as early in September as he can. David Murphy took some batting practice today and swung the bat well. So he might look at it, might be looking at an early September return as well. And Ian has enough at bats that this might stay in play here. This Davis over and he slides it has it pop in and out of the glove. Tough play right near the railing there in front of the Ranger dugout. Sliding so he doesn't smash into it. Got the glove on it, but as he was sliding, it just popped out. Nice try. Yeah, we were talking about Ian. He's got enough at bats right now to qualify for the title, the batting title. Tian rips one to Arias. There's the third out. Ian batting at 319 has enough at bats to qualify. That's going to be quite a race. No question. Last couple weeks. Six in the books. It is five to two Rangers. Amanda. Gary. Wow. You look amazing. Same old Gary. No, no, listen. I'm sorry about the way things ended. I was immature. But I've been doing some soul searching. I've matured. Bye, Gary. You can't always be smooth, but your beer should be. Brewed for a smooth taste that's never bitter. Keystone Light is always smooth. So, uh, eat. Rangers, Royals, tomorrow on FSN Southwest. Texas Rangers baseball on FSN Southwest brought to you by Southwest Airlines and by Whataburger. Top of the seventh here. There are the fountains out at right field as well as left field. Milton Bradley to lead things off against Gil Mesh. He'll be followed by Hank Blaylock, then Marlon Bird. Five to two, Texas. Milton, RBI double, a sack fly, and a ground out. He swings and loops one to left center. That's going to get down, and Bradley with a two hit night. The Rangers are putting a lot of men on base. Last inning was a one, two, three inning for Mesh, his only one. And here the Rangers are with their 13th hit. Obviously a night where Mesh doesn't have his best stuff. But the thing you have to like about it from the Royals perspective is instead of being out of there in the third inning when he was getting knocked around a little bit he's hung in there he's battled out of a couple of jams and here he is in the seventh inning giving innings even on a night where he's not at his best. Blaylock one for three had a single into right field in the fifth inning.
It's two balls, no strikes. Hey, coming up later, our Toyota truck game break. There's the first out. There's Marlon, who's one for three. Trying to go the opposite way, at least it's what fouled into the seats. Step back to the bag there. I think it was the third inning at bat that Mesh threw a breaking ball in on, on Milton and looked like he may have tweaked the quad again, but looked on getting back to the bag there. Missed by much. Mesh thought he had a strike there. His velocity's down too, all of a sudden. He's at 103 pitches. Thrown a lot of strikes though. 71 strikes, 32 balls. Good percentage of strikes tonight. Good percentage being put into play. There's another one. You got to think that's got to be it right there. Running on fumes. Here comes Trey Hillman, and looks like, yep, they finally are making the move. 14 hits allowed by Mesh tonight. And Joel Peralta, who had formed up twice now, three times, will finally get a chance to come into the game. It's like it's like wandering Cohen with the Cleveland Indians, warmed up all weekend to just get in last night. 5-2 Rangers here in the seventh. Top of the seventh inning, 5 2 Rangers. Joel Peralta's on in relief, and uh, our Geico quote tonight a chance to talk with Ron Washington. This is what he said about Frank Francisco and the possibility of keeping the role of closer. I really see it as a short term solution because he's never uh, had the ball to go out there and do it. And as far as the long term part of it, I think Frankie will answer that according to how he go about it, and then that'll give us something to talk about again this winter. It was Frank Francisco and of course with the three run lead Rangers with an opportunity to extend that lead but he is the guy that really thrown the ball well and, and you know if you look at that bullpen he's right I mean he has the guy that has the best stuff out there he will be closing games through the end of the season Nelson Cruz swinging at the first pitch got it. that's just below Ooh, a little low a little low and also I got stuck with the uh, the code the uh, the cord. But that was just to my left. Only foul ball I've ever caught broadcasting a game was downstairs here. Casey? Yeah. Oh, one popped up to right. Before he got underneath it, but he had a good swing at it. Finally got Nelson out. So three for four night for Nelson with the single the double the home run the three runs batted in two outs for Gerald Laird.
Jerry's one for two. Reached out a fielder's choice. Stole the base in the second inning, then singled in the fifth. The bunt single. Fastball misses upstairs. Thirty sixth game for Joel Peralta. The five twenty nine ERA. Mesh, of course, responsible for the two men that are on board. The five he's already allowed tonight. Sure, I think of the hitter was on that foul ball. Danny Bautista. Remember him, the outfielder? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's the guy that signed, got offered a pretty good contract, decided to retire three or four years ago, if yeah. I remember right. That's right. Don't see too many guys walking away from that kind of a contract. Oh, he's got him and Jose Guillen confused. They were kind of like the same type of player, look alike. They fouls that one off. Both outfielders. Two two. Just missed outside and the Rangers will get their runners going. With a full count of two outs. Bouncer to third. Tian has it. Third out of the inning. No runs, two hits, two left on. It is five to two Rangers. Let's send it to our studio for the Toyota truck game break. Welcome into your Toyota Trucks game break. I'm Rick Renner. Big news today for your Texas Rangers who make a deal. Eddie Gardado is traded to the Minnesota Twins for a flamethrower, six foot four sensation Mark Hamburger, who was the closer of the year in the Appalachian Rookie League. So the question is, who's the closer now? When you look at what we have down there as far as uh, guys with uh, stuff, uh, Frankie is the one with the stuff that is closer stuff. And, um, it, and, and for us to know for sure if he can or can't, uh, we have to give the ball to him. And so that's my decision to give the ball to him uh, to get those last outs in the game. And um, knowing Frankie, I think he'll take it and run with it. And we'll definitely be patient and see where it goes. Join us after the game with complete post-game coverage on Rangers Live. Five two Rangers here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Scott Feldman, six innings so far, six hits. So nice job with the three strikeouts, no walks. And Nelson Cruz, a three for four night. First game of the big leagues this year, including a home run, a three run shot. Butler, Glode, and Buck for the Royals here in the seventh. 90 pitches now for Feldman, 59. For strikes. He's really come back after that third inning when he gave up the four hits and the two runs. 
The only thing he's given up since then was a single to David De Jesus, who rolled a ground ball into right field. Butler's 0 for 2 with a ground ball to short and a fly ball to left. Line on Gilmesh tonight, six and a third, four strikeouts, five runs, 14 hits. The most hits allowed in a game by Gilmesh in his career. Butler bounces one through on the right side. As the Royals get a leadoff man here in the seventh for Ross Glode. Glode, the first baseman, 0 for 2. A pop up and a strikeout. Rangers four and two against the Royals this year took two or three as that ball gets away from Laird. That is a pass ball. Two to three at the ballpark to three two or three here at Kauffman Stadium. More importantly, Trent's trying to snap that three game losing streak that they're on right now. Yeah, yeah those two hits. In the left field. The runners at the corners now for the Royals with nobody out, and John Buck coming up. Two late swings at sinkers and little dinky ground balls into the hole. One the opposite way by Butler, and that one by Globe. Well, they talk about the ballparks infield and Arlington being fast. This this feels pretty quick here. Now usually Scott has to come back get another ground ball. Not much you can do about that. You got two weakly hit ground balls. They just found holes. And you keep throwing the same pitch getting ground ball. Eventually you get one to turn a double play with it. Buck with a double and a strikeout. Laird's going out to the mound with Warner Madrigal up and loosening. Warner's been in the last two games. An inning last night, inning in the third. The night before. Jerry Mills, home plate umpire, going to break up the meeting. Andy Hawkins, when he goes to the mound, he doesn't get cheated on his visits. Takes the full amount. Most pitches that Feldman has thrown this year is 105. He's at 95 right now. Breaking ball could be two. Runnels score and they get the out at second, although Royals fans don't like the call. That was a good play by Chris Davis to get the lead runner at second base and keep the double play in order, even though Gath writes the hitter. We're going to turn two on that slowly hit ball. And Scott has given up three little ground balls in this inning. It's led to a run, still has a man on base, two hits in that one force out. And making good pitches, but yet they've still got to run. Buck picks up an RBI, 41st. Here's Gathride, one for two, a single, fly ball to center. 
He swings and grounds one to short. This could be two. Michael takes it himself on Turned the it on play line. Right. Nicely done. There you go. Four, Forget about five, four, three. Four weekly hit ground balls. Nice job by Scott Feldman. The Royals get a run on a couple of hits. We played seven. It's five, three Rangers. Get away? Now you can. Fly to your favorite vacation destinations on Southwest Airlines starting at $69 one way. But hurry, seats are limited. So book now at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Texas Rangers and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Texas Rangers. This is what you've missed if you haven't tuned in tonight. Nelson Cruz and his return to the big leagues. Three hits. There's the double. This is the home run down the right field line. And then the single in the fifth inning. So three for four for him so far with three runs batted in. And also Scott Feldman's done a nice job tonight. Seven innings for him. The three strikeouts. He's issued no wants. He's allowed eight hits. And the run that came in in the seventh inning was unearned. So two earned runs. Through seven. Chris Davis will lead things off against Joel Peralta. The first pitch fastball is high. And Feldman looks like, unless they feel Madrigal is ready to go with the warm up pitches he had in the bottom of the seventh inning, Feldman might come back out, but if pitch count is any indication, his night may be over with. Yeah, the way Scott has been throwing the ball, he's perfect. It looks like he's perfectly able to go out there for the eighth inning. They've done very little against him for the last four and, four and two thirds. Even last inning when they scored they had four weekly hit ground balls inning before that they had a hit was just a dribbler into right field one two three one two three in the two previous innings so he's cruising right now hasn't walked the batter struck out three they're all bunched together in the third and fourth inning three out of four hitters struck out. Davis getting into one is left center field. Gathright at the wall, gone. Chris Davis going the opposite way. And the Rangers back up by three. It is six to three, Texas. Well, there's just a good indication of the power that Chris has that he can reach for a ball and just stroke it 410 feet to left center field. Almost launched a real long one. Back in the fourth inning when he flied out right to the wall in right field. And that's a pitch out and away from him that he just reached for and had to supply the power himself and drove it over the left center field wall. That's a big run for the Rangers. They hadn't scored since the third inning. 13th home run, 37th run batted in. Arias a little bouncer up the middle for his second hit of the night. And nobody out here in the eighth inning. A man on for Michael Young. Young's three for four with three singles. And a ground ball to short. 16 hits now for the Rangers. Darius with good speeds got a good lead over at first. Yeah. 
Here's the 1 0. Right through a fastball. That's one ball, one strike. There's Jamie Wright. Getting ready for the Rangers. Jamie's thrown the ball well over the last couple of nights. A loft speed pitch, and it's two balls and a strike. Michael with 72 runs batted in on the year tied with Johnny Peralta with the lead in that category among Major League shortstops. Takes the breaking ball low. Way ahead of the count is Young. And there's ball four. So three straight have reached. Fourth time that Young has been on board. He's got three hits. The first, the third, and then the fourth. That one right off the foot of Mark Tian. Fruit of the loom. Field for the game. Michael Young. Three knocks, just like Nelson Cruz, and that's going to be all for Joel Peralta. Came on in relief of Gil Mesh in the seventh inning. Got the last two outs. Former Ranger coming on in relief. It's six-three Texas. Both my parents, uh, just the way they raised me to play the game. People see me running all out, ground ball to the pitcher, going hard. My dad always taught me to be work twice as hard as everyone, and my mom taught me to be mentally prepared. So the physical and mental side of me as a person just all goes back to my parents. That was Marlon Bird brought to you by Dodge, your Texas truck stop. Robinson Tejeda, the former Ranger, comes on here with nobody out in the eighth inning. The Rangers with runners at first and second base. Already a run in on the Chris Davis home run is 13. There's the overall numbers on Robbie Tejeda. Yeah, Robbie's been throwing the ball well. Getting an opportunity to be a setup man for Kansas City. Peralta's been plagued by the long ball. He's given up 15 home runs now in about 50 innings. Tejeda coming in with nobody out and a couple of men on base. Robbie, just 26 years of age from the Dominican Republic. Four relief appearances for the Rangers. There's a hard ground ball pass load. Hamilton with a base hit. Arias will score. Going to third base is Michael Young. It is seven to three, Texas. Well, he fooled him with a first pitch changeup, then tried to throw a fastball by him at 94 miles an hour. Didn't work. Josh was right on it. Second hit of the night, so two for five is Hamilton. RBI number 116. You know, here's a game for Josh where he swung at some pitches out of the strike zone. He's actually struck out three times in the game yet when it's all over and done with he's two for five scored a run and knocked in a run now. Milton steps up two for three. A couple of runs batted in. Still nobody out seven three Rangers here in the eighth. That run of course George Peralta young. It's the responsibility of Peralta as well. Bradley chopping one off the plate. And that one will spin foul. Well, that's probably the last thing Milton wants to do right <laughs> now is hit a chopper and have to try to run hard to first base. He had a ball last night where he had to run really hard. 
to first base. Looked like he tweaked it a little bit. And tonight he's had a couple of balls like that as well. Good thing is he's staying in the lineup. The Rangers need his bat. He's knocked in a couple had a double and a single. And another chance to knock one in right here. Still nobody out. The hate had taken something off there and it's 0 and 2. The Royals playing their infield halfway in with nobody out. What they want to do is they want to try to turn a double play and keep the man at third base. Not very easy to do. Jammed him there. One way to do that if there's a ground ball hit to say a middle infielder you get the out at second. Keep your eye on the runner at third and if he's trying to score instead of throwing back to first base throw home. And it might be advantage Royals in this situation because. Of the quad injury to to Milton and not running 100%. The other thing you can do with the infield there, if it's a slowly hit ball that you can't get a double play on, if the runner tries to score from third, you can cut the run off. And at this stage of the game, late in the game, seven to three, you definitely don't want to give up another run. Tejada designated for assignment back on the 14th of June, picked up by the Royals. And he's thrown the ball well for Kansas City. One and two with a 257 under an average. Now pitching at his 19th game, Kansas City. 0 oh 2 again. That's a base hit to right. That'll score Young. Three RBI night for Milton Bradley. 8 3 Rangers. Well, you just can't underestimate what having Milton's bat in the lineup means to the offense. It just gives you a quality of bat every time up. You may get him out, but you're going to have to work to do it. Closes the book on Peralta. Rangers now with 18 hits tonight. The most hits that the Royals have allowed in a game was 19 this year. At Yankee Stadium back on the 7th of June. Brandon Box is going to pinch run for Milton. Three for four night with three runs batted in for Bradley. Setting a new career high in the RBI total. Blaylock takes a strike. Blaylock one for four with a single. Down it in one ball one strike everybody in the starting nine with a, at least one hit last one to get his hit was Chris Davis and he led off this inning with the opposite field home run. Peralta the two thirds of an inning three runs all earned on two hits. Round ball to second Cayasco over to Velas that's the only play they have. So Marlon Bird will come up now with runners at the corners. Yeah. Talking about the hits that the Royals have allowed this year the most the Rangers their highest hit total in a game this year. It's been 20. They've done it three times. It's 
two balls no strikes so like 10th against the Angels August 10th at Baltimore August 12th at Boston Going the opposite way. Guillen will make the catch, but this will be deep enough to score Hamilton. 9 3 Rangers. Marlon Bird with his 40th run batted in. And when you valet your car at a Rangers game, now you can have it washed as well. Fans can upgrade their valet service at the East Lexus Valet Stand for an extra 10 bucks to include a wash of the exterior and wheels during the game. Two outs, Blaylock over at first. Here's Nelson Cruz with three for four night. Takes a change of blow. Nelson in need of a three bagger to complete the cycle. Double in the second, a three run home run in the third, a single in the fifth. Caught the inside corner, it's one and one. Big swing by Nelson. Cruz, the eighth man to bat in the inning. The slider missed outside. They had to drop it down a little bit. Good sign right there that Scott Feldman's Knights come to an end. Seven innings for Scotty. Two two. Bouncer foul. Three strikeouts, no walks. Three runs, two earned on eight hits. In line to even his record at five and five. Popped up. Load and Kayaspo. And it'll be the second baseman making the grab for the third out of the inning. But the Rangers score four runs. They do it on four hits. And it started with the Chris Davis home run to left center field. Middle of the eighth. Nine three Rangers. Get ready for week one of the NFL season. Pro Football Preview returns September 5th. There's no crying in baseball because there are no to-do lists in baseball. There's no dry cleaning drop-offs, no soccer practice pickups, no 10 items or less lanes in baseball. There are no trips to the pharmacy, no lines at the post office, and there is no lunch hour banking in baseball. And that's why you could use some more of it. Take a look at the progressive upcoming schedule. Two games left here in Kansas City tomorrow on Wednesday night. That a four game series against the Angels starting on Thursday night. My 27 games, the first three of that series, then back here on FSN Southwest on Sunday. And here at the bottom of the eighth inning, it's Warner Madrigal on in relief. The Rangers up by the score of nine to three. It's the two outings of Warner's had over the last couple of games, of course, had the home run that he gave up to Kelly Shopik, but overall, the numbers 
solid in those last two performances. Pitching his third straight game. Face the top of the order for Kansas City, Avilas, Cayaspo, and De Jesus. Feldman, just three hits allowed after the third inning. Settled down nicely. That was a really nice job for Scott. Good game for him. He's coming off a good game, too, against the Tigers. He had six shutout innings, then gave up several runs in the seventh inning. They pitched into the seventh inning with a quality start against the Tigers and has a really nice outing tonight. Seven innings, two earned runs. There's a single up the middle. First hit of the night for Avilas. Third straight inning in which the Royals have gotten their leadoff man on board. That'll bring up the second baseman, Alberto Cayasco. Dustin Nippert now is up and loosening in the bullpen. Yaspo tonight, one for three with an RBI single. That's in the dirt, and that's a wild pitch. Falling behind at two balls and no strikes. There's a strike. Just missed off the plate. Corner, of course, way back when in his major league debut had that rough start to his Ranger big league career against the Yankees. Here's a pop up. Michael Young drifting over. One out. Warner's had enough good outings for the Rangers to show you that he has potential as a late inning guy. He'll frequently come in throwing the ball 95 miles an hour. And in some of his appearances he'll have both of his other pitches working for him too, the splitter and the slider and on those nights he's really tough. He's not a he's a guy that hasn't had a lot of experience pitching hasn't been in that role for very long. But as you look forward. Down the road, you could project him as a guy that could potentially be a real solid setup guy for you, if not more. There's a breaking ball for strike. Does have the ability to come in and throw strikes. That one's out of play, and it's quickly 0 and 2. De Jesus a three hit night. Magical just a couple of years into this whole pitching thing former outfielder in the Angels organization. Throw a fastball there, and it's one ball, two strikes. Kevin Millwood goes tomorrow night for the Rangers, looking for his eighth win. Zach Greinke. At 99. 
goes for the Royals. There's a chance for Blaylock. Takes it himself. There's the second out. That's one of the first hard hit balls that took a little hop on him that he had had kind of a challenge with since he's been over there at first base. You know, other than the one that was it two nights ago that to the backhand that was hit real hard, he really hasn't had that many chances over at first base. No, there haven't been a lot of you know tricky plays where he had to charge a ball or go to his right and catch the ball, flip it back to the pitcher. But they'll come. They'll have plenty of those. A nice play on that hard hit ball. Here's Guillen takes a breaking ball in the dirt. Nice job by Laird with the man at third base. Jerry had a tough night last night. A couple of foul balls. A breaking ball there. Guillen is over three. Tonight with nine hits, Gilmesh was a starter, lasting into the seventh as Madrigal misses low. Mesh giving up 14 of the 18 hits for the Rangers tonight. Foul back just below you. Whoa. I went back down in a hurry, too. I wouldn't have tried to catch that one. No? Nah. I'd let Big John catch that one. <laughs> you were looking back at Big John there. I duck, I duck <laughs> out of the way real quick like that and let John try to catch it. <laughs> Thankfully, that ball. That was too hot to handle. That was hot man. to handle. Yeah. That could just lead to embarrassment. Popped him up. Arias. Makes the catch for the third out. A leadoff single gets stranded at third base. Eight in the books, nine, three Rangers. Let's take a look at the Lincoln Mercury Better View pitching matchup for tomorrow night as Kevin Millwood, 7 and 7, with a 524 earned run average. Gets the ball for Ron Washington and the Rangers going up against the young man Zach Greinke who's 9 and 9 with a 3.86 ERA. Solid season for Greinke and of course the struggles the Royals have had scoring runs. That's why his record is at 9 and 9. There's Jeff Fulcino, the new chucker on for the Royals here in the ninth inning, 9 to 3 Texas. Chino will face eight, nine, and one. Laird, Davis, and Arias. The Royals have made one defensive switch, actually two. With Herman taking over in left field, De Jesus moves over to right. And Herman goes into the fourth spot in the lineup for Guillen. There tonight, one for three. Popped up on the infield. Glowed with the call. And there's the first out. Robinson Tejeda tonight went one inning. Allowed two hits, one run. It was earned. Here's Chris Davis. One for three tonight, but that one being a home run. Joel Peralta to lead off the eighth. Twelve thousand three hundred and ninety nine in attendance tonight. 
keep in mind with all of the construction that is going on they've taken out a lot of seats capacity now is just around twenty seven thousand eventually get up to thirty eight thousand or thereabouts big stadium club that was still uh, was still in working order the last time we were here no longer there at middle section down the third baseline as Davis goes down swinging for out number two. Two quick outs and here comes Arias. That's been a good game for Arias. He's had a couple of hits. Started a rally in the eighth inning. After Davis led off with a home run, he got a single to get another three run rally going. Playing some nice defense to go along with it, too. Chino looked like he stumbled a little bit on that landing area. Chino working with the Todd Jones starter kit with the big mustache. The count goes to one and two. Take a look at the Jack in the Box standings in the American League Central. White Sox with a game lead over the Twins. They split a doubleheader tonight against the Baltimore Orioles. The Twins right now leading Seattle one nothing that game in the third inning out in Safeco. And Cleveland still on the heels of the Tigers. They won tonight beating the Tigers four to three. Got to play for something outside of Prime. I've never understood it when when teams have been accused of going through the motions late in the season <laughs> because even if the team doesn't have an opportunity to go to postseason play another hit for Arias a rope down the left field line. Every individual player has something to shoot for. You've got young guys who are trying to win the favor of the manager in the front office for a place on the team next year. Veterans are trying to finish strong, if for no other reason than to have a good season themselves. So it never really has made much sense for that to occur. And I think sometimes what happens is a team just isn't playing well. And when you're not playing well and you're not scoring runs, it looks like you're going through the motions, but I don't know how many times that really happens. Some teams are better than others. Kansas City right now is not playing very well. And, uh, you know, the main problem they've got offensively is they, right now, with Gordon not in the lineup, they really don't have anybody that works the count that gives you a tough at bat. They've got some pretty good hitters that can hit the ball, but they're swinging early in the count. They're swinging three and one when they're down by six runs. They're swinging at three two pitches that are out of the strike zone that really could have prolonged some rallies and maybe led to a bigger inning early in the game. But it doesn't really mean they're going through the motions. They just don't have a good approach individually when they're at the plate. But going through the motions you know I, I you know I think I, you take that to mean that they're they're not trying and that they're that they're not hustling. And I don't know that that's always the case. I think it looks that way. But in reality, I don't think that for the most part players or teams get lazy late in the season. Just sometimes they're not playing very well. And it looks that way. Especially if you've got young players up in September, there's it's just not logical that they'd be going through the motions. Those kids are trying as hard as they can. Young battling Fulcino here in the ninth. Looking for his fourth hit. A three for four night, including a walk, and scored three runs. It is, however, a lot easier to get the adrenaline flowing when the team is fighting for a common goal 
late in the season, which is postseason play. And De Jesus will make the grab for the third out. No runs. A hit and the man left in scoring position. We head to the bottom of the ninth. It is nine to three Rangers. Hey, got a question for John Daniels? Now is your chance to get your question answered by the Rangers general manager. Selected questions will be answered in a Q&A, which premieres on TexasRangers.com on Wednesday, September the 10th. Submit your question by September the 2nd on the fans page at TexasRangers.com. Bottom of the ninth here at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, 9-3 Rangers. Here's a good look at Josh Rue, who comes on to finish this game out. Josh had the best line of the night on the plane yesterday when he walked by you and went, hey, man, glad I could give you something good to talk about the other night. <laughs> Josh had had a rough outing, and at least he could smile about it and put it behind him. That was that was funny. And that's that's basically his approach. I mean, that's the personality that he that he has. You know, I think especially as a relief pitcher, you have to have that approach. You can't dwell on it. Just a game that didn't go his way. Fine, it's over with and put it behind you. Have a sense of humor about it. Very healthy attitude, in my opinion. Tian fouling that one off. Tian Butler and Glode. And Josh has always had that that type of attitude about himself. I'm sure it was helped out a lot by Eddie Guardado being here this year. Because there's no <laughs> there's no doubt. As far as getting knocked around or having a, a bad game or getting down about himself, Eddie Guardado, every single time, especially if it was a getaway day, he just had fun with it. I mean, he, he it, it ate him up, but he put it behind him and, and moved on. We'll definitely know that he's not in the plane yeah. in that card game behind that us because we won't hear that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that is the loudest laugh. <laughs> I don't know what kind of cards they're playing back there, but judging by Eddie, they're having a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> that and the old, uh, as we get ready to land, we're coming in hot. <laughs> yeah, he stole that away from Chris Lingus. That used to be Chris's line. Tian flaring went out the shadow left. Marlon Bird on the run. Nice play for the first down here in the ninth. That'll bring up Billy Butler, the DH. Porter Madrigal tonight, an inning. One hit, the rest zeros. Scott Feldman will pick up his fifth win, moving to five and five on the season. Seven innings, three strikeouts, three runs, two earned on eight hits tonight. Butler swinging first pitch, diving stop by Davis. He's got a good arm. I throw the tag. No. Oh, nice try. All the way around. Diving play, long throw. Hank had to jump off the bag. He made the tag, but I think he made the tag just as Butler touched the base. Good try. Nice effort to get to the baseball. And there's no doubt with Butler running that if the throw's on the bag, he's out. Single for Butler, man on, one out. Here's Ross Glode. Oh. <laughs> Gerald's looking at second base like he might have a throw. It's one of the shorter distances between the plate and the backstop here. The ball ricocheted right back to him. I think this one slipped out of his hand. Good thing we've got that tracker. Loads one for three. There's another breaking ball that will move Butler over to third.
So you get two pitches, one over your head, one bounces in, and then you swing at a ball that almost bounces in there. That is just undisciplined hitting right there. Yeah, that'd drive you crazy if you're the manager. Two balls, two strikes. Sure, Trey Hillman is thinking that. Don't know if he'll say it, but I bet he's thinking it. Well, especially for a guy, that, at least everything that I've read, and when I talked to him when they were at the ballpark, very disciplined, loves fundamentals, preaches fundamentals. There's a line shot to the left, that'll score up. Nine to four, Rangers. Glowed picking up the RBI. Catcher John Buck will step to the plate. Buck tonight is one for three as he swings wildly. The one a double with a run scored in the third inning. Thirty hits tonight, 19 by the Rangers, 11 for Kansas City. Ground ball could be two to end it. Young over to Blaylock, and sure enough, game over. Royals get a run in the ninth inning, but it's a 9-4 Ranger victory. Scott Feldman with his fifth win. And not only that, his 12th quality start. Team leader in that category. Warner Madrigal, one shutout inning of relief. Nelson Cruz a big game in his debut the 2008 campaign here in the big leagues it carries over from triple A up to the big leagues Michael Young a big game with three hits trying to get himself back on track to see if he can reach that 200 hit plateau but overall nice win for the Rangers to start this seven game road trip picking up the first game here in Kansas City Rangers now five and two against Kansas City nine four the victory.